Today's witness, Ms. Cassidy Hutchinson, is another Republican and another former member of President Trump's White House staff. Ms. Hutchinson, do you remember Mr. Giuliani meeting with Mr. Meadows on January 2nd, 2021? I do. He met with Mr. Meadows in the evening of January 2nd, 2021. And we understand that you walked Mr. Giuliani out of the White House that night. He looked at me and said something to the effect of, Cass, are you excited for the 6th? It's, it's going to be a great day. I remember looking at him saying, Rudy, could you explain what's, what's happening on the 6th? Uh, he, he had responded something to the effect of, we're going to the Capitol. It's going to be great. And I found Mr. Meadows in his office on the couch. He was scrolling through his phone. I remember leaning against the doorway and saying, I just had an interesting conversation with Rudy, Mark. It sounds like we're going to go to the Capitol. He didn't look up from his phone and said something to the effect of, there's a lot going on, Cass, but I don't know. Things might get real, real bad on January 6. The White House continued to receive updates about planned demonstrations, including information regarding the Proud Boys organizing and planning to attend events on January 6. I recall hearing the word Oath Keeper and hearing the word Proud Boys closer to the planning of the January 6 rally when Mr. Giuliani would be around. Of course, the world now knows that the people who attacked the Capitol on January 6th had many different types of weapons. When a president speaks, the Secret Service typically requires those attending to pass through metal detectors, known as magnetometers, or MAGs for short. When we were in the offstage announce area tent behind the stage, he was very concerned about the shot, meaning the photograph that we would get because the rally space wasn't full and he felt the mags were at fault for not letting everybody in. But another leading reason, and likely the primary reason, is because he wanted it full and he was angry at that we weren't letting people through the mags with weapons. But when we were in the offstage announced tent, I was part of a conversation. I was in the, I was in the vicinity of a conversation where I overheard the president say something to the effect of, you know, I, I don't effing care that they have weapons. They're not here to hurt me. Take the effing mags away. Let my people in. They can march to the Capitol from here. Let the people in. Take the effing mags away. I saw Mr. Cipollone right before I walked out onto West Exec that morning. And Mr. C Cipollone said something to the effect of, please make sure we don't go up to the Capitol, Cassidy. Keep in touch with me. We're going to get charged with every crime imaginable if we make that movement happen. And when you finally were able to give Mr. Meadows the information um, about the violence at the Capitol, what was his reaction? He almost had a lack of reaction. I remember him saying, all right, something to the effect of, how much longer is, does the president have left in this speech? When Republican leader Kevin McCarthy heard the president say he was going to the Capitol, he called you, Ms. Hutchinson. I answered the call and he sounded rushed, but also frustrated and angry at me. And I, I was confused because I, I didn't know what the president had just said. The president just said he's marching to the Capitol. You told me this whole week you aren't coming up here. Why would you lie to me? I said, I'm, I'm not lying. I, I wasn't lying to you, sir. I, we're not going to the Capitol. And he said, well, he just said it on stage, Cassidy, figure it out, don't come up here. So once the president had gotten into the vehicle with Bobby, he thought that they were going up to the Capitol. And when Bobby had relayed to him, we're not, we don't have the assets to do it. It's not secure. We're going back to the West Wing. The president had very strong, a very angry response to that. The president said something to the effect of, I'm the effing president, take me up to the Capitol now. To which Bobby responded, sir, we have to go back to the West Wing. The president reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Mr. Engel grabbed his arm, said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. We're going back to the West Wing. We're not going to the Capitol. Mr. Trump then used his free hand to lunge towards Bobby Angle and 
Mr. when Mr. Renato had recounted this story to me, he had motioned towards his clavicles. And was Mr. Engel in the room as Mr. Ornato told you this story? He was. Attorney General Barr said in an interview that the Department of Justice had now not found evidence of widespread election fraud sufficient to change the outcome of the election. Ms. Hutchinson, how did the president react to hearing that news? The valet had articulated that the president was extremely angry at the attorney general's AP interview and had thrown his lunch against the wall. Was this the only instance that you are aware of where the president threw dishes? It's not. I remember Pat saying something to the effect of, Mark, we need to do something more. They're literally calling for the vice president to be effing hung. And Mark had responded something to the effect of, you heard him, Pat. He thinks Mike deserves it. He doesn't think they're doing anything wrong. And we have received evidence of one particular practice that raises significant concern. Our committee commonly asks witnesses connected to Mr. Trump's administration or campaign whether they've been contacted by any of their former colleagues or anyone else who attempted to influence or impact their testimony. Here is how one witness described phone calls from people interested in that witness's testimony. Quote, what they said to me is as long as I continue to be a team player, they know I'm on the right team. I'm doing the right thing. I'm protecting who I need to protect. You know I'll continue to stay in good graces in Trump world. And they have reminded me a couple of times that Trump does read transcripts. And just keep that in mind as I proceed through my interviews with the committee. I think most Americans know that attempting to influence witnesses to testify untruthfully presents very serious concerns. We will be discussing these issues as a committee, carefully considering our next steps.